It's Monday, so it's time to get our creative juices flowing with a mini pocket painting. Today I'm going to show you how I did this little autumn squirrel. Now the first thing I did is I took some burnt orange, but you can use burnt sienna, burnt umber, any brown that you want. And I just started painting in straight on dry paper just to get sort of the initial layer of paint down and I just wanted him to be brown he's such a cute look at those chubby cheeks he's such a cute squirrel so I am getting him all nice and brown again you can use any brown that you want I got a burnt orange is actually the color but it really to me looks more like a sienna and I'm just going straight onto the dry paper using my size 2 brush just getting a nice layer of this pretty brown on here and getting his little legs we got to get his little legs in there get his back and just paint all over him I like to start before I do my serious paintings I always like to start off doing a little small painting and that just gets my brain going into the creative mode it activates the right side of my brain I'm not trying to be perfect with these. I'm not trying to make a masterpiece. I'm just actually getting my brain in the mood. These usually only take me about 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm ready to paint. Then I'm ready to get serious about this thing. So we're just going to paint our little cute squirrel, get our brain activated before we move on to the work of the day. So I've got that layer down, so now I'm taking a little bit darker brown, and I'm going to start adding it around his cheeks, around his head to give a shadow. You can use sepia, you can use burnt umber, you can mix some of the brown, the uh, brown that you used for the first layer with a little black if you want to to make that darker brown. You can mix a little brown with blue to make it darker with a darker blue. So any of those things will work. Just use a darker brown, whatever you have on hand. Or if you want a psychedelic squirrel, use completely different colors. He doesn't have to be a brown squirrel. He can be a gray squirrel. He can be a red squirrel. He can be a purple squirrel. It's your squirrel. And now I'm just adding these darker colors, taking a little clean water and just sort of blending it out. I'm not being, I don't want it to be too smooth. I want it to have some texture because he is a furry little devil. So we want him to have some texture to show that fur but we're not gonna paint in every single little hair on him. We're just gonna make it a little rough. We're just gonna add some scumbling, just giving some rough strokes. We're gonna add some more shadows right on his little arm so that white chest pops out now. Take some clean water, I'm just blending that out. Down his little leg, adding a little bit more of that burnt orange for his feet and his lower leg. And just blending that all together. Now just picking up some of that paint. It was a little too thick for me so I just picked it up with a damp brush. Now I am wetting this area and then I'm just dropping in some of this darker brown in the shadow areas. I'm leaving some of the paler brown, the lighter brown showing through. I'm not covering up the whole squirrel's body. I am trying to add a little more paint where I want a darker shadow and a little bit more of the paler paint where I want it to stay lighter. So I'm adding in all these little shadows and starting to show where the form of his arms and his little legs. I guess squirrels have legs, they don't have arms, but my squirrel has arms, so we're gonna shadow in his arms. Now I'm taking that darker and right onto dry paper, I'm just gonna make a lot of just thick brush marks trying to make them go the way that the tail is, they grow along the tail, so I'm trying to make them go in that direction, the way that they actually grow along the tail. And as the tail curls over, I'm gonna make those curl over, those brush strokes, to indicate that his fur is, you know, still growing in the same direction, but since his tail is curly, we've got to make sure that we indicate that by the direction of our brush strokes. And now I'm adding in some more of the lighter brown. I'm leaving a little bit of that base color, that first layer to show through so that it looks like a nice bushy squirrel tail. We want our, our tail to be bushy. We want our squirrel to have a, a 
a fluffy tail. So we're making it look really fluffy, really bushy by showing a lot of the brush strokes, letting a lot of that light area show through. Remember this was dry paper that we started on for the tail. We let that area dry and now we're just doing a wet to dry paper. Now I'm going to work on his little beady eyes. He has got some little beady eyes so we are taking lamp black and I'm just painting in the eyes and I'm leaving a little white dot for the highlight. I'm going to do the other little eye and do the same thing. We're going to make his eyes sparkle with that little highlight. I'm taking a little bit of it down just a tad. It looks like he's got on some reverse wing eyeliner. That's all the rage people. And he is in fashion. So now I'm taking a little rose and just uh, painting it over his little nosy. Just a little permanent rose right over that. And I'm going to come back and add some shadows to this, this far back leg here. And underneath this front leg, separate those little toes with some shadows. And on his little hands, put, put those with some shadows to separate his little fingers. And add a shadow between his leg and his arm across his tummy and under his chin so that we can separate the sections of his body so that he doesn't look like a, just a little blob squirrel. We want him to have an anatomy. <laughs> we don't want him to be a little blob. So that shadow, those shadows really do a good job of separating and getting his form, bringing his form to be a little more realistic. Even though we're not going for pure realism, we're just going for more illustration and a quick sketch. This is this is how I sketch my watercolors before I start on my painting that I want to be finished. I just sort of play around with the colors, play around with the shadows. I don't worry about it being too perfect. And that just frees my mind and my brain up somehow. I don't know. It just gives me permission to paint. So that's Another function of these little quick paintings, I'm just giving my per my brain permission to paint and permission to play. And I'm just taking a little micron pen, and that is a zero one size. You can just use a permanent marker that's waterproof. And I'm just adding some sort of fur-like marks on there just to add a little texture and define his appendages a little bit more. And go right up that tail, right around his legs. And this is an optional step. You don't have to do this. I just decided to do it to see how it would look. Again, I gave myself permission to play around and check things out and experiment. So I'm just trying to see how that's going to look. And I like it pretty much. It's a, I mean, it's pretty good. It, it gives a little another dimension to his fur. So I, I like it. But it's optional. You don't have to put it on your squirrel if you don't want to. You can leave him all watercolor instead of a little mixed media. And I'm just adding a little bit of marks just to define his face on that side. Now I've let this dry completely and I am working on the leaves that he's sitting on. And I'm just taking some oranges and some reds and just dropping them in there. Actually, I think that is permanent rose, a little orange, a little red. Just mixing it and letting that water do the blending for me. And I'm adding a little bit of gold in there. I want it to look fall-like. So now I'm adding some clean water to this leaf over here. And I'm going to get my green gold and start dropping that in there. I like the green gold for the fall. And then I'm going to take a darker green and drop some of that in there. And a little bit more of the green gold, but with less water in it. So it's more like a milky consistency instead of a watery consistency. And I'm letting them all just blend naturally together. Now I'm going to add some a pale wash of this permanent rose. And I'm just going to drop in more reds and some oranges and some yellows just to get that fall look so that we know this squirrel is in the fall. He's not a spring squirrel. He's not a summer squirrel. He's a fall squirrel. So I'm just adding in some maroon here around the tips and around the base of his bottom on this leaf just to indicate it's a shadow. 
And now I'm going to come to this leaf and do the same thing. I'm going to wet it with a little pale green wash. And then I'm just going to add some yellow, some gold, some green gold, and a little bit of the darker green. And just let the water do the work for me and use the tip of my brush just to pull some of that pigment out to lighten it up toward the center. And um, I think he's finished. Well, no, we need a shadow. We need a shadow. So here we go. We got some ultramarine blue and I am just taking that ultramarine blue and putting it right under the squirrel. It's a watery wash and spreading that under there for his shadow. And then I'm going to take a little darker color, a little darker and just right against his body where the shadow would be the darkest would be against whatever object is casting the shadow so you want it a little darker toward the subject and you want it to come out paler as it goes further away because the further away it gets the more in the light that shadow comes and the paler the shadow becomes so i'm just blending that in with my little brush so now now i think it's finished i think he is a cute little autumn squirrel now i'm ready to do my serious painting and i've still got a mini little gem so if you like art hit the subscribe button or like and follow me for more.